Mm. Wow. Wow. It's actually quite bad. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Binging with Babish, where this week we're taking a look at Tyler's bullshit from the menu. One of the more harrowing foodie film experiences that prods us in our collective imposter syndrome and lets us vicariously experience our worst nightmare, getting up on stage and having no idea what you're doing. So first up, the protein in question, lamb, which is Frenched and cut into double chops. Now, I don't want to waste too much lamb on the screen accurate version, so I'm only going to do three ribs. To French these, we want to place a cut across the point where we want the bones to end, then continue cutting between the bones and the skin to remove. Then we're going to cut the thin strips of meat and sinew from between the bones, right down the point of the initial cut and try to remove as much of the lamb from the now exposed bones as possible before beginning to scrape the bones with your knife to remove the thin final membrane. Once the bones are uniform color and squeaky clean, you got yourself a Frenched rack of ribs, from which I'm going to remove the skin and excess fat from the top and separate into individual chops. I know the Tyler's were double chops, but I don't ultimately think that's going to make a big difference. Next up, the leek, which was simply sliced. Tyler used the entire unwashed leek, but because leek's interiors are so dirty, I'm going to stop there for the sake of sheer edibility. Next up the shallots, which were haphazardly chopped, some with the skin still on. And lastly, a big hunk of butter dropped into too hot a pan. Once that's good and melted and maybe slightly burned, I'm going to start by adding my double aromatic combo of shallots and leeks, allowing these to cook for an indeterminate period of time until they're, I don't know, softened or something. Then in amongst the vegetables, we're going to add the lamb, making an attempt to nestle it down between the other stuff so that it can boil in butter and at least gesturally be cooked. After about three to five minutes, just enough time so that the lamb picks up some nice gray color and it's definitely not cooked through. We're heading straight to plating. No seasoning nor garnish is necessary. Arrange the chops over top and there you have it, Tyler's bullshit, which while it has its shortcomings is on the table in less than 20 minutes. But how's it taste? I'm going to make myself a bite here of the very rare lamb and the partially cooked leek and I can tell you that Chef Slovik's critiques were really spot on. It's really quite bad. Raw lamb, runny butter, and dirty vegetables. So can we make something salvageable out of these star ingredients? I'm going to start by filling an ice cube tray with olive oil in a seemingly random pattern and throwing those in the freezer to solidify for at least a few hours. While that's happening, we can take the very necessary step of cleaning our leeks. After cutting off the roots on the bottom, trimming them to a uniform length, and slicing them in half lengthwise, we're going to rinse them thoroughly in a big old bowl of water. As you can see, there's a huge amount of yuck that we don't want to end up in our yum. Now, once we've patted the leeks dry, we're going to place them in a vac sealed bag. Then we're going to fill the spaces in between the leeks with a sliced preserved lemon, which has a much more mellow flavor than its fresh counterpart, two large cloves of crushed garlic, and our olive oil ice cubes, which we froze so we could more easily vac seal the bag without all the liquid getting sucked out. And since it wouldn't be a chefy dish without some sous vide, that's where these guys are headed, a 185 degree Fahrenheit water bath for 40 minutes, during which time we can prep our lamb, which I'm going to roast and crust. I want to keep the predominant color of the dish green, so I'm pulsing two cups of pistachios in a food processor until they're coarsely ground, and tossing them with a half cup of panko breadcrumbs. The roast itself is getting the same French ribs treatment, and before crusting, it's going to get lightly seasoned with kosher salt, rubbed down with a little bit of vegetable oil, and seared in a ripping hot cast iron skillet. Just enough on each side to introduce a little color, Maillard reaction, and by extension flavor to its exterior, so blast it as quickly and as hotly as you possibly can. Then once it's cooled off for about 10 minutes, we're going to brush down the meat evenly with a mixture of two parts white miso to one part Dijon mustard. This is going to act as a delicious glue with which to adhere our pistachio breadcrumb mixture. Then this guy's getting placed on a rack set in a rim baking sheet, temperature probed at its thickest point, and roasted at 400 degrees Fahrenheit until it registers 125. Now to cover the shallot's presence, we're finely mincing a, a shallot, crushing up one clove of black garlic, and finely mincing two tablespoons of tarragon in preparation to make a black garlic bernays. Then our olive oil poached leeks are coming out of the hot tub, getting removed from the bag, and patted dry of excess oil with a paper towel, because we're going to lightly grill these leeks to finish them. But true to form, we have to go way over the top, so I thought we'd utilize some bean chotan, the fussy, long-burning, and odorless Japanese charcoal. So we're going to let our leeks sizzle over top that cut side down while we make our bernays. Into a small pot goes our single finely minced shallot, half of our chopped fresh tarragon, and one quarter cup of white wine vinegar. We're we'll bringing this to a gentle simmer and cooking until barely a tablespoon of syrupy liquid remains. Set that aside to cool completely before placing it into a large heat-proof bowl, along with two large egg yolks that we're going to whisk together into a smooth mixture before bringing it back over to the stovetop where we have a 
pan of shallow simmering water at the ready. Turn the heat all the way down, place the bowl over top, and whisk constantly for five to seven minutes until the mixture is thickened and nearly doubled in volume. Then, both to make it Bernays and to incorporate the final missing ingredient from Tyler's dish, we're starting to stream in 12 tablespoons of melted butter one little splash at a time, whisking thoroughly between each addition to make sure that it's fully incorporated and so that the sauce doesn't break. Once all the butter's added, kill the heat, season with salt, and whisk in our crushed clove of black garlic. Now there's a butter and shallot sauce I can get behind. Once the leeks are nearly done and the lamb has rested for 10 minutes, it's time to carve, plate, and serve. First, let's see if our lamb is a pleasant medium rare. Before carving, as desired, I'm going with two double chops. To plate, we're going to plop down a generous gob of our black garlic bernays, and it just wouldn't be a tasting menu without one of these chefy smears. Then I'm trimming the rough ends off the leeks and pulling out everything but the outer two most layers, which are tough and stringy, placing them on the plate, of course, with tweezers. Arrange the lamb over top in a haphazard yet intentional way, and of course we gotta utilize some microgreens, this time by virtue of some smaller tweezers. I'm gonna sort of dot those around, the varying culinary topography. Then I think this dish is gonna need a little bit of acid and a little bit of heat. Luckily, Alvin left some pickled bird's eye chili in the fridge, which I think is gonna add just the right amount of bite to cut through all the richness. And there you have it, the hopefully edible version of Tyler's bullshit. Leeks, lamb, shallots, and butter all proudly on display. But how's it taste? And I'm not trying to toot my own horn here, but it's really very good. The black garlic bernays is a perfect pairing with the lamb. The olive oil poached leeks are tender and flavorful. The microgreens, as always, do virtually nothing. And the brightness of the pickled chilies provide a flavorful contrast. Would Chef Slovak like it? Probably not. I'm guessing you'd find all them kinds of things wrong with it. But he is a miserable psychopath, and I'm over here eating lamb like it's lollipops. Thank you.